Cindy Kang, Associate Curator here at the Barnes Foundation. And I'm going to be looking at a painting that we have in our main gallery right here. It's Madame Cezanne with green hat. So you can see it here on this wall. It's really anchoring this um, wall on, on the side of the doorway. So it's a pretty prominent painting in one of our most prominent rooms. And I thought it would be, it's one of my favorite paintings. And so I thought we would just dive in. So this is a portrait of Cezanne's wife, um, Marie Hortense Fiquet. Um, so who, who was she? Who is Marie Hortense? So she was from a working class family in France. Um, she met Cezanne in Paris in 1869 when she was working as a bookbinder and part-time as an artist model. So it was through her part-time job that she met Cezanne. And they soon got together and they had a son named Paul in 1872. Now, Cezanne was from a wealthy family in the south of France. His father was a banker, and he knew that they would not approve of his relationship with Hortense, and that if they found out, they might cut him off of his allowance, and that was really how he lived. He didn't live by selling his paintings. So he hid Hortense and their son Paul from his family for many years. Um, so, for example, when Cezanne would go down to Provence in the south of France to visit his parents for the summer, Hortense and Paul would just stay in Paris, or if they did go down with him, they would stay in a separate apartment. Uh, so this is the way their relationship went for a while. They lived in separate residences often, they lived apart for long periods of time, and they actually didn't even get married until 1886 when Paul was already a teenager. But despite this, um, you know, estranged arrangement of their marriage, Cezanne painted Hortense um, nearly 30 times. Um, so he made almost 30 portraits of her over the course of two decades. So she was his favorite model. She was um, his most frequent model, the person that he painted the most of all of his portraits. And I think in this way that these portraits attest to um, an exchange, or we can even say a collaboration between husband and wife. So here we see her seated on a green upholstered armchair with these scrolling arms, and she's wearing a pretty fantastic hat that gives the portrait its name. So let's uh, look a little bit closer at this hat. Um, it's got a wide brim, uh, a tall crown trimmed with green leaves, and you can see it's a little bit transparent here and kind of reveals the top of her forehead. Um, so it's a hat that doesn't have, as far as we know, quite an equivalent um, in contemporary fashion. I mean, the, the tall crown with the elaborate hat trimmings was quite, quite fashionable at the time, but um, it doesn't quite um, correspond to anything that we can find in real life. And this fantastical kind of whimsical hat really contrasts with the rest of her outfit. Um, she, you see she has this very tailored, structured, dark, somber blue, you know, bodice. Um, and it especially contrasts with her expression. She really kind of stares off rather sternly into the distance. Um, she's thrusting out her lower lip. So she has this kind of dour expression on her face. And it's kind of interesting because you would expect someone who is wearing this kind of hat to be smiling um, and maybe to even be a little flirtatious. Um, it's really quite of a fashion statement of a hat, but Hortense is definitely not doing that. Uh, and I find that there's actually a refreshing honesty in this portrait. So Cezanne was a painstakingly slow painter. He would take very long in between brush strokes. So what you see here is kind of Hortense annoyed and tired of sitting, and she's just sitting there waiting as her husband is painting her. Um, and in this way, this portrait really disrupts the conventions of female portraiture. So she may be well-dressed, 
but she's not smiling. You know, she's not trying to be charming. She's not trying to be pleasing. This painting is very much actively resisting that expectation. So for a long time, scholars and you know, most of the major scholars in art history in the 20th century were male. Um, they really only had negative things to say, or mostly negative things to say about Hortense because she does look so unhappy or angry or bored uh, in all of Cezanne's portraits of her. And so they found her incredibly off-putting. You know, this is the same today when women are told to smile so that they are more pleasing and more approachable, make people feel more comfortable. Well, you know, Hortense is not doing that. Um, but what Cezanne is doing here, I think, in presenting the blunt reality of his irritated wife um, and frustrating the expectations of female portraiture is, is to tell us that the meaning of the painting doesn't actually rely in her as the subject, that this is not, you know, it's not in presenting her as the subject that we find the, the significance of the painting. He's deflecting us into um, looking instead at the paint itself. And it's really in the application of colors and in the interaction of form that we can find the meaning and the emotion of the picture. Um, it's here that we can find some indication or some suggestion, some record of the intimate exchange between um, painter and sitter, between Cezanne and his wife. So let's zoom in and look at her expression. Um, you really see the delicacy and vibrancy of the colors on her face, um, the way the pinks, the greens, the blues, the ochres dance across her features. Each stroke, each dab seems to suggest a passing emotion or a passing expression. It's as if her skin is this scrim across which the paint flickers to capture different moments. It's really lovely and incredible. Um, but as resolved as her face is, um, her hands are the opposite. Let's take a look at them. So look how summarily the, these are painted. It's hard to tell which fingers are intertwined with which exactly. Um, and here, look how bluntly and um, distinctly these different strokes of color are laid on. Um, they very much, um, you know, are paint. <laughs> They're not flesh. Um, and what you're seeing here is that, that it's almost as if her hands are a blur of nervous energy, that Cezanne is expressing movement, um, as if Altans was constantly moving her hands or twiddling her thumbs or rubbing her hands as she's sitting there, you know, waiting while her husband paints her. And this instability uh, extends to other parts of the composition too. Let's zoom out and look at the whole composition. So you see, for example, in the arms of the chair, um, this arm is extremely elongated and this arm is somewhat truncated and foreshortened. You know, this is not a realistic um, portrayal of a chair in perspective. And if you look at the wall in the back, you see this kind of dark red brown strip of, wain of wainscoting that doesn't match up on either side. So there's this instability of space, right? You don't really know where she is sitting in space, how the walls are matching up in that corner there, or they're, they're not matching up at all. Um, and then if you look at Hortense's posture, it looks actually extremely uncomfortable, I think, because she's leaning way far to her right in this kind of awkward um, angle. Her body is a kind of S-curve that is then being contained by these other elongated curves of the arms, by this kind of diamond shape that her arms um, form and that, you know, that the, the crown of the hat forms an apex for. So it's it's very interesting because all of these, these warped lines, these askew angles do intersect and interact um, to result in a very balanced composition, right? The, even though things are a little bit askew and off, off kilter, the, the composition feels stable. There is a resolved wholeness and calm kind of monumentality to it, but that still allows for the expression 
of all these passing sensations um, and all these ephemeral moments of emotion that pass between the husband and wife as, as she's sitting there. So today, Hortense's role in Cezanne's work is thankfully being much more recognized, more fully recognized in publications and in exhibitions, because we can really see in this portrait that um, it's it's far more nuanced and complex, this relationship between Hortense and her husband and her role um, in his work. It's, it's really much more rich than scholars have previously allowed. Um, well, that's it for today's Barnes Takeout. Thanks so much for joining. I hope you will be able to come and see this work in person. Um, we are open um, at limited capacity with new safety measures, so please visit our website. Thank you. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.